Egypt's annual inflation rate eased to its lowest level in four years in July, barking expectations of an acceleration driven by fuel subsidy cuts and increasing the likelihood the central bank will cut interest rates later this month. Consumer prices in urban parts of Egypt increased by 8.7% in July, compared to 9.4% the previous month. The month-on-month -month rate, however, sped up to 1.8% from a contraction of 0.8% in June. Annual inflation hits a four-year low despite slashing of fuel subsidies in July. Well, it's good news for MTN Nigeria's Morgan Stanley Capital International has included the telecom giant in its frontier markets index with effect from August 27. Let's see how that is rubbing off on the shares of MTN today and, of course, the market as a whole. Eddie Jung Wang will tell us. Hello, Eddie. Good afternoon. So how is MTN shares doing at the moment after the announcement of its inclusion into the MSCI index? Hello to me, good afternoon. Well, I must say that investors are really, you know, reacting positively to that news, especially with the fact that, you know, some years ago, MSCI considered removing Nigeria from the index, but, you know, changed its mind. So with this, you know, admission of MCN, it would really give the company some visibility on the international market and give investors an opportunity to trade on it, you know, also coupled with the fact that, MTN is going to be paying dividends of 2,995 copper. So investors are really, you know, welcoming the news. Currently, MTN is up by 3.66% and trading at 133 naira. So let's see how, you know, that, that goes on for the rest of the day. But MTN, you know, investors are really, you know, embracing the news. What is the general market update? How is the overall index doing at the moment? Well, it's still MTN that's pushing the market up. You know, we're currently up by 0.10%. Um, most of the sectors are down. Banking is down more than 2%. Insurance is, insurance is the only sector up at this time, and that's just by 0.30%. Oil and gas is down. Consumer goods are down. Industrial goods are down. So we can actually see that, you know, in most of the, um, the, sen the positive sentiment is coming from MTN. Guinness um, has lost about 10%, Forte Oil is down by over 9%, Zenith Bank, UBA, most of the big banking names are actually down at this time. But MTN, hopefully, we, we, we hope that we would see um, MTN's boost, you know, pushing the market up. So hopefully today will be a better day for the market, Chimizi. Well, we hope so. We always hope for the best. Thank you for this update, um, Eddie. We'll move on now. A Zambian court has dismissed an application by Vedanta Limited to stay the liquidation of its Concola Copper Mines unit and set the hearing for a widening of petition on August 27. A Zambia's ZCCM Investments Holding PLC, which owns a 20% stake in KCM, is seeking to liquidate the company, accusing Vedanta of lying about expansion plans and paying too little tax. Vedanta says it is a loyal investor that spent more than $3 billion in the country since 2004. A South African court last month ordered Zambia to halt the liquidation proceedings and rule that the state breached its shareholder obligations and continues to do so. And Sierra Leone is reviewing all mining licenses as part of a government cleanup of the industry. The West African nation has already cancelled or suspended permits for assets that were not operational. Once one of the great hopes of West African mining, the diamond-rich nation was hit by the iron ore price collapse and the biggest ever outbreak of Ebola in 2014. Plagued by chronic corruption, double-digit inflation, and the legacy of a civil war, economic growth stalled at 3.7% last year and has persistently failed in recent years to match an expansion of as much as 21% prior to the outbreak of the Ebola epidemic. In the meantime, a lawsuit filed by a Sierra Leone community against a diamond mining firm owned by Israeli billionaire Benny Stemitz, BSG Resources, underscores how local groups in developing countries are increasingly emboldened 
to try and use legal methods to address grievances. The lawsuit filed in March in the West African country's high court claims $288 million in damages for degradation or destruction of land, destruction of homes and loss of livelihoods and dumping of toxic mine waste, among other things. At the foot of a slag heap some 40 meters high, Adi Kali Bangura showed cracks in the walls of his home and holes in his aluminium roof. He says that the result of rocks loosened by years of blasting by Sierra Leone's largest diamond mine. Bangura is a traditional healer and community elder in Koidu, the largest city in the West African country's diamond rich corner district. <laughs> They are all damaged. This place is all damaged. Bangura's claim is part of those made by a group of Koidu residents in a lawsuit against diamond mining firm Octia Limited and related companies, highlighting how communities in developing countries are becoming increasingly emboldened to use court to pursue grievances against mining firms. The group alleges Octia poisoned the water, destroyed houses, and failed to relocate hundreds of households away from the blasting. According to a 2003 mining license agreement, the Octia subsidiary that operates the Mine Coido Limited said it will relocate all households within 500 meters of the mine. What are you not fine for we? It's not sickness for we. During the time where this company not been begin for operate, we will get a fine water. The complaints filed at Sierra Leone's High Court in March claims $288 million in damages for degradation or destruction of land, destruction of homes and loss of livelihoods, and dumping of toxic mine waste, among other things. On July the 22nd, a judge ruled the case was adjourned for judicial recess until at the end of September. Across Africa and the developing world, local groups are increasingly mounting legal challenges against companies extracting minerals. The number of high-profile lawsuits against foreign natural resource firms filed by communities in developing countries nearly doubled over the last decade to 30 up from 16 filed between 1998 and 2008, according to data from Business and Human Rights Resource Centre, the UK-based organisation that tracks the human rights policy and performance of companies. And finally, oil futures jumped more than $1 a barrel today, recovering half of the nearly 5% losses in the previous session on expectations that lower prices may lead to production cuts. Brent crude have rebounded to $57.75 a barrel, up $1.52 from its last close, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures jumped $1.51 to $52.60 a barrel. Both contracts hit their lowest level since January on Wednesday after a surprise build in U.S. crude inventories added to worries that a China-U.S. trade war could further dampen demand growth this year. And that's it on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimezie Obi. You're welcome.